Hello, and welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and today I want to talk to you about creating a coping skills toolkit. So what the heck is a coping skills toolkit? I know. Um, So let me explain what it is. So it's an actual physical container, and that's where you can put several strategies that work for kids when they're having a challenging time. There may be a ton of strategies that work for your kid and the best thing that you can do is actually to take some of the top three or four and put them into this coping skills toolkit so that they can easily access it when they need it. Let me just give you an example. So I've done this for kids throughout my career, but there is one particular child when I was working in the, in the middle school that I was really concerned about for the summer. Her mom was a single mom and the child was gonna spend a lot of time by herself this su- in that summer. She was a frequent flyer to my office, so I basically saw her almost every day. And she had basically her own sort of toolkit in my room. So she would come in and she would play with the Play-Doh and she'd play with something else and she'd do a little coloring. But we kept it in my office, so that way you know she could come in, she could do a quick check-in and she could go on with her day. I was concerned because she was didn't really have a ton of connections outside of school and she was going to be home a lot during the summer and I was just concerned that she wasn't going to be able to access her coping skills as well as she had been. So I created a coping skills toolbox for her. I gave her a toolkit and, and I go back and forth between the, the word toolbox and toolkit um, and I gave her a toolkit that she could take home with her over the summer. I think I just used a shoebox and put in several of the strategies that she had been using during the day in my office so that she could have it for the summer and then keep it with her so that when she was having a hard time at home, she could use that. She could call on those skills when she needed it. I say you should have maybe at least three or four items in the coping skills toolkit. Some popular ideas of things that you can put in there include fidgets, something to squeeze like Play-Doh, coloring pages with colored pencils, maybe even a little bit of journaling, lines paper if they want to write something. And it all depends on what sort of strategies they have decided work for them. When you've been exploring your coping skills using the coping skills checklist, use those strategies, Take pick out a few and put those actual things inside the coping skills toolkit so that kids can use them later. I'll link up to the coping skills checklist, but I also link up to another resource I love from endnextcomesl.com that has a bunch of ideas for things that you can put in a coping skills toolkit. So. Something that I always think about when it comes to toolkits is what about those coping skills that use your imagination that don't have something tangible with them? So for instance, blowing bubbles, you can put a bubble container inside the coping skills toolkit. Coloring, you can put coloring paper and pencils inside the toolkit. Deep breathing with your hand, you can't put it in a toolkit. Using your imagination to take a little mini vacation, you can't put that in the toolkit. But what you can do is make a visual related to that coping skill. And that's super easy to do. You can just take an index card and simply write the coping skill on a card. That is a visual that a kid can use that's super easy and quick to make. If you wanna get a little bit more fancy, what you can do is you can have them do the skill and then take a picture of them doing it, print it out, put it on an index card, and there's your visual for inside the coping skills toolkit or you could have a kid draw it. So maybe they draw their favorite place to imagine when they wanna take a mini vacation and they put that in the toolkit. Or maybe they draw, they trace their hand and they put that in the toolkit. Those are great ways that the kids can then make remind themselves of those strategies that they've, they have. They have a tangible visual with them instead of trying to remember it. Using visuals is a powerful way to help kids. When kids are overwhelmed, it's hard for them to figure out what to do, and it just is a great reminder for them when they have that visual in front of them. I also think it's important, before you put a strategy in there, you need to make sure a kid tries it. So for instance, if you want to put 54321 grounding into a coping skills toolkit, you need to try it first with a kid because if they look at that kit and they see 54321 grounding and they have no idea what that means, 
then they're not gonna use it. It's not a skill that's gonna be helpful for them when they're in crisis if they haven't ever tried it. So that's why it's really important to try it first and then put it into the toolkit. So to make it easier, I've actually created some visuals, the coping cue card. So I have a digital version that you can download and print off. And then I also have the card decks and you can check those out over at copingskillsforkids.com. Take care of yourself and have some fun. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.